What if I informed you that the current approach to constructing metro lines is flawed? These metro lines found globally share a common characteristic. The majority were constructed mid-century with a sole objective, facilitating a quick commute from suburban residences to workplaces. However, this model no longer aligns with the functioning of modern cities. Across the globe, significant adjustments are being made to rectify and modify these city loop structures, albeit at a substantial cost. In particular, one city is investing 125 billion Australian dollars in an extensive infrastructure project to address this issue, though completion is anticipated to take over 50 years. This represents an unprecedented scale of improvement for metro systems. Melbourne is changing Why don't traditional metro lines suit most cities anymore? People today live and work in diverse locations, and city areas are no longer strictly residential or commercial, but mixed. Take Melbourne as an example. Initially, offices and shops were concentrated in a central grid, while residents lived in the suburbs. During the post-war era, railways extended to the suburbs, serving the city well for a while. However, the system has become outdated as people now reside in city apartments, and offices are spread across various locations. The old approach doesn't function effectively anymore. For instance, if you lived in Burwood and worked in Caulfield, using public transport meant traveling to the central business district and back. Talk about an hour and 20 minutes by train. Driving the same route would only take 16 minutes. Now, observe the modern metro lines. They recognize some of the world's most efficient, showing a clear pattern. Numerous lines intersect and form loops not only in the city center, but also in outer boroughs. These lines offer diverse options, enabling a variety of journeys beyond the traditional commute from the suburbs to work, reminiscent of the Mad Men era. The Suburban Rail Loop SRL. Melbourne is currently undertaking a mega-project that happens once in a century to tackle this significant issue. Despite having a population of 5 million, which recently surpassed Sydney, making it Australia's most populous city, with 19% of all Australians residing there, not enough people use the trains. Despite a construction boom over the past decade that resulted in the city having almost more skyscrapers than London and Beijing combined, and being home to notable events like the Olympics, Luna Park, and even Margot Robbie before her Barbie days. Melbourne lacks state-of-the-art public transport. Despite having the world's largest tram network, its metro system falls short. According to 2021 census data, around 50% of people commute to work by car, while only 30% opt for the train. Therefore, the city is constructing additional rail lines beyond the central area, known as a suburban rail loop. It's a massive 90-kilometer project skirting around Melbourne's outer suburbs. However, completion is not on the immediate horizon. This colossal 125 billion Australian dollars initiative is divided into four phases. The initial section, covering 26 kilometers of twin tunnels and introducing six new stations, is expected to cost around $33 billion and will be finalized by 2035. The second phase, connecting to the city's airport, is projected to be completed between 2043 and 2053. Brace yourself for the completion date of the entire loop. It's set for 2084. Yes, indeed, this is a long-term mega-project. Some critics believe that the Suburban Rail Loop SRL, is a plan to manipulate political dynamics in Melbourne. However, there are more significant financial concerns. The project lacks one-third of the proposed funding from value capture and public dissatisfaction is growing as Australians feel the impact of inflation. Both rent and fuel costs are increasing, and this trend is evident even in the United States. Despite a positive start to the year with a stock market rally, the S&P 500 is expected to experience its most substantial monthly decline since December due to concerns about prolonged interest rates. Market panic is spreading with global investors selling nearly $17 billion in equity funds through mid-September and U.S. stocks are at the forefront. Analysts are increasingly anticipating a challenging economic situation in the coming year. The Metro Tunnel 
Before Melbourne can construct the extensive suburban rail loop, the city needs to address traffic congestion in the city center. To tackle this issue, they are constructing the Metro Tunnel. These machines are digging tunnels 40 meters beneath Melbourne Street, covering a distance of 9 kilometers. The tunnels will establish a new end-to-end -end train line connecting the west to the southeast, incorporating five new stations. These tunnels mark the initial phase of Melbourne's infrastructure transformations as they target a crucial flaw in many city loop designs, the choke point. The necessity for every line to pass through the city center limits the number of possible train journeys, in contrast to cities like London or New York, where you can expect trains every 5 minutes, in Melbourne, trains only arrive once every 10 or 20 minutes. This requires careful journey planning, and if you miss the train, you'll likely experience significant delays. This tunnel may seem like an obvious solution for now, but it wasn't always that way. Some politicians favored prioritizing trains, while others leaned towards focusing on highways. When plans were finally in place for construction, they had to be revised because the public learned that this massive tunnel would disrupt the city's main street and split Melbourne in half for years. A somewhat dramatic politician even likened the project to the Berlin Wall. This led to clever engineering to maintain the tunnel's route without causing major disruptions. Instead of tearing down all of Swanston Street, specific buildings along the tunnel path were demolished and excavations were conducted beneath the street to provide access for workers and tunnel boring machines, TBMs. Speaking of TBMs, four of them were responsible for excavating the twin tunnels for the Metro Tunnel, and they were massive, each weighing over 1,100 tons and stretching 120 meters in length, comparable in size and weight to the skyscrapers they were tunneling beneath. Each TBM was equipped with a cutter head weighing 100 tons, acting as a drill capable of tunneling through rocks six times harder than concrete. TBMs operated almost like submarines, with a crew of up to 10 people, including an operator, working on each TBM at any given time. They were staffed and monitored around the clock, with fully equipped offices, kitchens, and toilets. A state-of-the-art navigation system ensured the TBM stayed on course and avoided accidental drilling into unintended areas. The TBMs were named after local female heroes, each with their own unique color. The first TBM, named Joanne, was launched from Arden in 2020, followed by Meg a few weeks later. The other two TBMs were launched a few months later from the opposite end of the tunnel. All four met in the middle of mid-2021. The first leg of Melbourne's rail journey is set to open in just over a year. While the complete vision will take many decades to finish, progress is already underway. Melbourne has a clear vision of what kind of city it will become by the end of the century. And it's surely not going to be a small one. What are your thoughts? Let me know about them in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and if you liked today's video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Luxury Explore for more interesting contents like this. I'll see you in the next one.